Welcome into the End of Money Podcast for KeelanSelect.com for Saturday, March 28th at Gulfstream Park, Florida Derby Day, and a bunch of stakes races. We're going to take a look at the last four. They're all graded, making up an all graded stakes pick four. Tom Leach along with Jim Goodman here. And Jim, let's jump in with the 11th race, the Gulfstream Park Oaks for three-year-old fillies at a mile and a 16th. Who do you like? Well, I like about three or four horses. Uh, one, one of the options that we have in a pick four, and obviously before we start talking about the pick four, we, we need to let everybody know that there's a pick five and there's a huge pick six at Gulfstream. Uh, we're not going to cover those other two races, but uh, uh, the pick six is a forced carryout, and uh, the, carry, the carryover is going to be close to $2 million, so they'll put... I don't know, $7 million in there on Saturday. It's pretty much the, uh, they and Oakland are the biggest things in town. So the big six is a big opportunity for you. It's a good play on a carryout day. So uh, uh, hopefully that you make some money there. On the pick four, uh, Tonla's shape is going to be the favorite here off that front-running win, Devona Dale. Uh, working well, Tyler stays for Sassy Joseph uh, and four for Fort Gulfstream. There's a lot of reasons to like this filly. Um, and one option for the pick four uh, would be to single toneless shape and single Zulu out for the next and just go deep as you can in the 13th and 14th. I'm not going to do that with a pick four that I'm going to recommend because I think there's three or four other horses in here that have a shot. Spice is nice, the five for Todd Fletcher. Did not run that well in the Bonadale, but um, toneless shape got a got an easy lead and just went wire to wire, and Spice is nice, just ran second all the way around behind her. So there may be a little more speed in this race, and toneless shape might get tested especially by another horse that I like, Lake Avenue, the four horse for Rosario and Mott. Rosario takes over for Junior Alvarado. Alvarado is Mott's go-to rider, but nothing wrong with Joel Rosario taking this horse, so he might like her a little bit better, and she might respond for him. And the other horse I like was uh, the seven horse Lucretia for uh, Arno Delacour. Ran really well in that Suncoast race as a prep for this on at February the 8th. And the horse um, uh, likes Tampa. Don't know if uh, she's going to like Gulfstream. But the impressive thing about her is that, that Keeneland maiden break her back on the turf. She's an 86 buyer. And they've switched her over to the dirt. Uh, I like her buyer progression. She goes 72 to 82. If she gets up in the high 80s, she's going to be right there. So I'm going to go four deep in here. Toneless shape would be my play over Lake Avenue. Spice is nice and Lucretia. Yeah, I've got the same four, actually. I have Lucretia on top. Uh, impressive three-year-old debut in her first try around two turns was the first thing that kind of jumped off the page to me. And then she's worked really well for Arno Delacour, and uh, I think he picks his spots well when he uh, ships around. So I, I like uh, Lucretia here off that last win over at Tampa. But the next one I had was Spice is Nice and then Tonal of Shape and Lake Avenue. I had them in that order. And one thing about Alvarado, I saw an article, you don't have to worry about him choosing something else or being taken off the horse. He rode at Louisiana last weekend and then I think went back home to New York and they changed the policy where jocks right. to ride Saturday had to be there by last Sunday and he couldn't couldn't get there. So he uh, wasn't allowed to, to basically come in and ride. Uh, some other guys will, will pick up mounts that he had, but Lake Avenue I think is uh, – dangerous in there too so i really couldn't find a standout among them so i have to, gonna have to use all four when we get to the pick four 12th race is the grade two pan american going long mile and a half on the turf and zulu alpha could well be a single in here uh, she's in or he's in career best form the only vulnerability i could see is he's coming off back to back buyer tops and sometimes uh, a horse i mean no no curve goes continually upward thankfully, when it comes to the coronavirus. So it, it, that would be the only vulnerability that uh, he maybe uh, would be possibly ready for a regression. But uh, you got to certainly use him, and um, a lot of people will single. I'm going to throw in one more uh, when we get to the pick four. My second choice in here is Focus Group. This is a horse that's kept really good company and has had some good days in good company, but uh, hadn't really put it all together, it seems like. Sometimes, even going from one outstanding trainer to another, just the, the new barn can find the, the right button to push. So he moves to the Clement barn. They've had him a long time, and uh, they picked this spot to bring him back in, which isn't uh, certainly an easy spot. So focus group uh, for me as a, as a contender Channel Cat and uh, is another one you can take a look at if you want to go deeper. And then uh, there's a horse called Go Poke the Bear that Mike Maker claimed two starts back. And then first time out had a nice win with an improving buyer speed figure. The figures look light, 
but we've seen Maker before have great success identifying a horse that could be a good marathoner, and he'll claim the horse, and then a couple of starts later be uh, winning something like this. So uh, I think that one's a little uh, dangerous possibly as well. How do you see the Pan American? Well, we talk about this all the time. We did not speak before this uh, handicapping session, so uh, but I got exactly the horses that you got. Excuse me, I've got Zulu Alpha has never been better. Seven consecutive 100 plus buyers, 106, 107 last two, and I've got a question mark as well. He may not run a 108, but he doesn't have to. I think he's got to run in the low 100s here to win this race. He's four out of five at Gulfstream. I've got Channel Cat and Focus Group as the only ones in the same class. I, I'm like you, go poke the bear would have to really jump up in the numbers. He ran an 84 buyer last time out in optional 35. This is a big step up. But he hasn't been a mile and a half, so Maker might might recognize something in here. So I'm going to put him in, in my trifecta underneath. But uh, I'm going to play Zulu Alpha on top, and I'm going to single him in the pick four. That gets us to the grade three Appleton race 13. This is on the turf at a mile, though. We're four-year-olds and up, same as the previous race, but a mile here versus a mile and a half. And you've got uh, some of the top contenders uh, coming back out of a race in which they uh, ran against each other, finished uh, three of them right together on the wire. Uh, who do you like in the Appleton? I like a lot of horses in the Appleton. And I think it's uh, – I got six horses here for the pick four. Um, I can make a case for all of them. English B, the one horse coming out of that same race, with somebody A coming out of that race, and Hey Dakota ran in there as well. Um, that's not in this race, but that's another another nice horse coming out of that Canadian turf on, on February 29th. March the Arch, the three, eight to one in the morning line is very juicy. Just missed the Tampa Bay Derby at five to two. Third race the form cycle, has a chance to move up. Battle of Rocks is a classy older horse, uh, not what he was a couple of years ago, but he's three to four at Gulfstream. Louder than Bombs is 15 to 1 and comes from out of the clouds. And I can see this race falling apart at the end. He ran third to the Canadian turf at 49 to 1, juiced up the trifecta. He's three for eight at the distance. Somebody A won the Canadian turf, and he's probably the favorite at 7 to 2, but not a lock at all for Pletcher and Saez. And then El Tormenta uh, has been off since the Breeders' Cup mile. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the yes, Breeders' Cup mile, grade one, where he only lost by four and a half to Uni. If Uni was in here, he'd be three to five, so she'd be three to five. So, uh, big shot. Uh, the layoff is concerned, but uh, El Trementa from that twelve hole has, has a big shot. I think so. Don't have a strong opinion at all. Um, I think um, somebody A is a. Uh, if you're looking to cut the ticket down, you've got to use him. But I think March the Arch and Battle Rocks are are solid as well, and English B. So, uh, this is a spread race for me. If you can. Go lower here and cut your ticket down. More power to you, but I'm going to use six of them. I'm going to end up cutting the ticket down here, but my note I made on my pick four is mm -hmm. that uh, I'd like to go a lot deeper, but uh, if, I, if I move, if I start going deep, then I get real deep into the race quickly, and it uh, really elevates the ticket because uh, I'm not going to single anywhere. So uh, I ended up uh, narrowing it down to three in here um, for the pick four. Social Paranoia actually was my win pick. Um, this horse kept some classy company as a three-year-old, and he won big here in his only start on the grass course. Now, Javier Castellanos tested positive for COVID-19, so he's not going to ride, but he was named on this horse, and he rode English B to a really nice performance last time, and he came over to Social Paranoia. Now, it'll be somebody else riding, obviously, but just on that, and that decision I thought was interesting, and uh, Pletcher's had this horse with a steady series of, of training moves at Palm Beach Downs, and so I have a hunch he could uh, be ready to uh, to fire a good one, but uh, English B and, and some by A uh, are really close for me, um, kind of a toss-up. I'd given a slight edge to English B and then ended up switching over to Social Paranoia. And then uh, there were others I liked, uh, March to the Arch, uh, Hembry, only thing I don't like is he tends to run second too often, but uh, really nice post, and I think he's a good price play. Louder Than Bombs was a big price last time and finished right there with somebody and uh, English B. And then uh, El Tormenta, I know you make a great point about uh, what he did last season. I just don't like the 12-hole the going that short turn to the short run to the uh, turn at a mile. Uh, not wild about it for somebody either, so I think that could make him a little vulnerable. So social paranoia is going to be my win pick, but this is very much, uh, I think, a wide-open race. 
Brings us to the 14th race, the last race on their card Saturday at Gulfstream, and it's the Grade 1 Florida Derby for three-year-olds going a mile and an eighth. And I ended up going to Independence Hall, and I will acknowledge I'm trying to to beat the the favorite here, Tis the Law, who I think will be a pretty solid favorite. But uh, yeah, Etienne's going to take a lot of money too. And I think Independence Hall, if he fires his best shot, is could be right there with them and at a uh, much better price. So I'm going to go there. He does have a triple-digit buyer figure from last fall, so that suggests that he has the kind of class that it takes to win a race like this. I like the workout pattern, working out over at Tampa. That uh, should get him dead fit for this spot. Mile and an eighth might be a question, but Rosario rides, and he is a strong finisher. And um, I think um, Independence Hall uh, might have a shot to uh, beat him, and you might get 7-2, to 4-1, to one, I'm hoping. Tis the law, at TNDN, or certainly um, the top two to beat, I think, in, in either order. And then I would uh, probably throw in Gouverneur Morris as well, a uh, lightly raced horse, second in the Claiborne Breeders' Futurity here at Keeneland last fall, and has certainly flashed a lot of talent in the, his three lifetime starts and just on the, the chance. That was a nice field that he beat in his three-year-old debut, and, uh, he could just be really good, so I'm going to have him on my ticket as well. How do you see the Florida Derby? I think you go one one of two ways in the Florida Derby. You either single tis the law or you go really deep. And I, the Florida Derby tends to be a race uh, over the last few years that surprises happen. So I'm going to go deep here. Uh, I'm going to give you the six horses that I'm going to use in the order of preference. Tis the law is obviously the favorite. It's a solid favorite. I can't fault anybody who would single him here. That Holy Bull victory was awfully good. He beat Etienne Indian easily who came back and, and won the fountain of youth franco barkley tag uh, he's a legit favorite uh, and with a win he maintains the status as one of the top two or three derby favorites along with the backward horses independence hall like you said he disappointed the sam davis one key thing that you said is i really like the fact that they kept him at tampa to work i'm not sure he liked the tampa track it's a heavy track and and, and gulf stream is completely different but he is going to be fit <clears throat> Uh, the switch from or- Ortiz to Rosario might be a good thing. He had a really good work on March 22nd. So if he brings that work over there, he's going to be right there. At the Indian, uh, uh, a lousy post for a mile and eighth, 12 hole, but it's difficult to get the lead from outside. But almost, they've almost got to send him and, and hope to go wire to wire here. So we'll see how Daru does there. And then my three horses uh, that I'm going to add in with the uh, obvious ones, I'm going to use Aja Weed. Um, Saez may suit this one. He lost contact with the field and Sam Davis and never had a shot. So I'm, I'm just going to draw a line through that. If, if he repeats his Remsen from last fall, it makes him competitive with these. Uh, Governor Morris, again, off that race at Keeneland, I, I agree. He won an optional claimer at Tampa easily in a tune-up. He just needs to move forward. To, to, and, and then I'm going to throw in a real long shot called Disc Jockey. And this horse has only been out three times. They started him out at Gulfstream in a maiden claimer for $35,000. Uh, and was claimed out of that. And then uh, <laughs> Joseph did his wonders there, uh, however he did it, and he went from a 33 buyer and that maiden claimer to an 85, and then he, he jumped up to an 89 in the uh, a $60,000 $60, stakes race at Gulf Street, the seventh long. He stretches out here, never has faced this competition. He's only been out three times, but the key thing is uh, Tyler Gaffleyone is, is one of the best riders to Gulf Street. So I'm going to throw in this jockey just, for the chaos and the fact that it'll be a, a huge payoff if you get him. So I'm going to use six when he gets to the pick four. So let's look at your pick four ticket. Well, how's it stack up? Okay. First race, I'm going to use the four that we both talked about. So I'm not sure your, your ticket's going to be the same. Four, five, seven, nine with Lake Avenue, Spice is Nice, Lucretia, and Toneless Shape. I'm going to single Zulu out for the nine horse in the 12th race. The Appleton, I'm going six deep uh, with the one English B, the three March the Arch, the four Battle Rocks, the 9, Louder Than Bombs, the 10, Sambia, and the 12, El Tormenta. And then 6 deep in the last race, 3, 5, 6, 7, 9, 12, with this jockey, Gouverneur Morris, Aja Weed, Tis the Law, Independence Hall, and Etienne Indian. So the pick four again is 4, 5, 7, 9, with 9, with 1, 3, 4, 9, 10, 12, with 3, 5, 6, 7, 9, 12, and that's a $72 ticket. I'm going four deep in the first leg, four, five, seven, nine, just like you. I'm going to use nine and ten, Zulu Alpha and Focus Group in the Pan American. One, three, and seven in the Appleton. Uh, Social Paranoia seven is the win pick. 
and then English B and uh, well, one three and seven. Actually, one ten and seven. That should be uh, some by A. So uh, one ten and seven in the thirteenth uh, race, and then in the last race, five seven nine twelve with the nine Independence Hall being the win pick, and then Gouverneur Morris, Tis the Law, Etienne being the others. So four five seven nine with nine ten with one seven ten with five seven nine twelve and a forty eight dollar ticket uh, for me. Really nice card. Uh, I think there's 10 stakes races. Not all of them graded, but uh, full fields and a uh, nice uh, day of wagering. The only sport still going where you can watch without already knowing the outcome. So uh, best of <laughs> luck with your wagers down at Gulfstream Park. And you can keep your Keeneland Select account funded. There are ways to, to fund it uh, without having to, to go interact with uh, anyone. So you can do that and uh, play the races uh, throughout the week or certainly on these big cards on the weekend. Uh, We wish you luck, and we'll be back next week for another edition of the In the Money podcast for KeelanSelect.com.